Welcome to another edition of After Hours, our first After Hours here in 2023. And since it's the beginning of a new year on Sunday, rather than diving right back into Mark's Gospel, uh, which will be beginning next week, I took a week just to think through a little bit about the idea of our callings and our work and how we faithfully fulfill those. And one of the topics that I mentioned just in passing was this idea of common grace and that in our callings, working with uh, others, we can even work with unbelievers because of what is known as God's common grace. Now, when Christians normally think of grace, we think of saving grace, the grace by which God redeems me and cleanses me of my sins and brings me into relationship with him where I am his child as a result of this. And that's a very good, important concept. We need to be thinking through that, but we also need to add uh, this other category. We have to have a category that says there is also what is known as common grace. And common grace is essential for us to understand. I defined it a little bit on Sunday as saying uh, it refers to the aspect of God's grace that restrains sin and its effects and gives general blessings to humanity and creation so that human beings can partially fulfill God's original design for them. But this common grace is not part of salvation itself. It's something distinct from that. And this is really important. The reason the idea of common grace arose is as theologians were thinking through a lot of questions in the biblical text, they had to answer and wrestle through a lot of questions like, why didn't Adam and Eve immediately physically die? In the day you eat of this, you're going to die. Well, they died spiritually, but they did not die physically. How was it that they were able to continue on? The answer is common grace. Um, that when we think about the fall and the terrible effects of sin, why doesn't sin, which is so destructive and leads to death, why hasn't it absolutely destroyed everything? Why is the earth still so productive even after the fall? And God said that the earth is going to produce thorns and thistles and you're going to have to work with the sweat of your brow. But, but our planet is so productive. And especially when you consider compared to everything else we've been able to run into in the entire cosmos, we can't find anything that's growing anywhere except for here. And our planet is hyper productive. Why is that in a fallen world? Why is it that we... Uh, can have art and music, and even that unbelievers make beautiful art and music. How can they do that if they are under the judgment of God? Why do people still desire to develop creation? Even people who are atheists, there's something in them that makes them want to develop creation, which is ultimately to God's glory, whether they accept it or not. What are? How do we answer all of these things? Well, the idea is common grace that grace of God that's not part of salvation, but that God extends to us in his kindness to promote the common good, to keep us flourishing, to restrain those effects of sin, uh, and that it's available to both believers and unbelievers. Only believers experience God's saving grace. Everyone experiences God's common grace. And so common grace is important for us to think of because it's giving general blessings to all humanity, even unbelievers. That's why the earth still abundantly produces. That's why the sun, we have uh, sun and moon and seed time and harvest as God spoke after the flood with Noah and these continue on. It's because of God's common grace. It's why there's joy, even for unbelievers, at a new birth, at a wedding, uh, in friendships, in good food, in music. We're all able to experience these things, not because we're Christians, but because being human and having the image of God and God giving that common grace to us to enable us to experience his good blessings that were intended for us even before the fall. And so common grace will allow that original intent to continue. Uh, it's why human beings are still longing to know and to develop and to rule creation. It's why human beings who, even those who are rebelling against God, uh, do good things because they're his image bearers. And though sin would stop that, common grace enables it to happen. And so we need to think in these terms as Christians because it keeps us from getting a black and white, all or nothing, either you're a Christian or I can't do anything with you approach to life, which is really not sustainable. Common grace touches every part 
of human life and culture. It touches uh, the, the physical, again, that Adam and Eve didn't die immediately, that there is food, that there is healing for our bodies. It touches intellectual areas that even unbelievers can think and reason and understand. It's how we can develop even science to understand the way God has ordered creation. It touches our moral aspects. Uh, people don't always sin. Total depravity doesn't mean people are as bad as they can possibly be. In fact, many people who are unbelievers can be very compassionate. Many of them can try to understand truth and labor and work, and we don't denigrate that. We think that that is a good and right thing. It works in the creative area. Very often, people who are unbelievers have produced more in the areas of, of art and even also science and technology uh, than others. And we can rejoice in those good things. It works in society. We want a society that is filled with common grace. I don't want unbelievers acting out every aspect of sin, nor believers uh, doing that. We need God's common grace to restrain those things so that we can have relationships, so that we can have government, so there can be economic uh, blessings and benefits. All of these things are part of God's common grace, and it's what allows us as Christians to work with non-Christians. So I want to encourage us to think in those terms as we head into these years. This is a bit more of an intellectual thought process and working through a category, but the more we do this and the more you take time to think about it, the more it helps us to understand the way the world actually operates and how we can be effective in that operation and how we can, as we receive the blessings of God, both from saving grace and common grace, can serve to extend those blessings out to others. It's a lot of information here, but I encourage you, you can dig in a little bit more. If you look, if you go to our uh, website, to the brcc.church and you click on the teachings and resources tab, you can look up teachings by topic and there is a topic, common grace, and you can see a whole bunch of past teachings that we've done on this, including the notes from them and understanding. Um, and if you look in the uh, devotional guide that we sent out this week, it's got some more teachings on Common Grace. Uh, and you can go to, again, those, uh, those teachings on the website to understand that. You can also relate to teachings on the two kingdoms. If you go to the teachings by topic, you can see the uh, the teaching topic of the two kingdoms, and that'll have a lot more about common grace and how we work as believers in the midst of an unbelieving society and world. So I hope this is helpful to you. I hope you can think through these things so that we can launch out in 2023 being faithful in our callings, blessing others because we've been blessed by God. Hope you have a great week, and I look forward to gathering for worship this Sunday as we will dive back into Mark. God bless. Thank you.